Today we have a poem by Rabindranath Tagore. The poem is Abhisara, the Tryst. The very word Abhisara means meeting, appointment, a meeting of a, a woman with her lover. The word Abhisarika in Sanskrit means a woman who is shamelessly, fearlessly rushing out to meet her lover. And from this comes the term Abhisara. The English word tryst, of course, means a meeting. So, in this poem, we have two characters, two important characters. One is Upagupta, the disciple of Buddha. And the other is Vasavadatta, a dancing girl, a courtesan of renowned beauty who resides in the town. So, let us see. Upagupta, the disciple of Buddha, lay asleep on the dust by the wall of Madhura. Lamps were all out. Doors were all shut in the town and stars were hidden in clouds in the murky sky of August. So here we see that Upagupta is lying on the dust. He is outside the city gates of Madhura. We see that the doors of the city are shut and the stars are out, meaning to say that it is dark, it is night. From the very beginning we see that the poem has a great deal of visual imagery. We see the night, the night full of stars and the lamps are out. The sky is hiding the stars because it is a murky sky. Murky means gloomy, dismal and even the month is given to us. It is in the month of August that this incident is going to happen. Whose feet with those tinkling with anklets, touching his breast of a sudden, he woke up starting and the rude light from the woman's lamp struck his forgiving eyes. So suddenly Upagupta is woken up. Somebody touched him. Who was it who touched him? It was none other than the dancing girl Vasavadatta, she who wore Anklets on her feet such that when she walked, you could hear the tinkling sound. And all of a sudden Upagupta woke up and Tagore sees the rude light from the woman's lamp. He is blissfully sleeping so that light that then comes on his face is described as rude light. And in turn, his eyes are described as his forgiving eyes. The very word forgiving gives us a preface of Upagupta's character. Upagupta is a man of immense compassion, innocence, purity. He is so forgiving. His eyes are already forgiving. He does not even need to see who has woken him, woken him up. He is going to forgive that person. It was Vasavadatta, the dancing girl, starred with jewels, Clouded with a pale blue mantle, drunk with the wine of youth. So, the person who is standing there is Vasavadatta, the dancing girl. And she is wearing a pale blue mantle. A blue mantle is an overcoat, a dress without sleeves, which a woman would wear over, an, over her dancing attire. It is like a coat which she is wearing in order to go back into her house. She is said to be drunk on the wine of youth. She seems to be so proud of her beauty. She is enjoying. She is almost vain of how beautiful and how young she is. She is said to be drunk with the wine of youth. She lowered her lamp and saw the young face, austerly beautiful. So, this lady, when she saw a young man lying down, she lowered her lamp. And when she saw his face, she was amazed at how austerely beautiful he was. The word auster means simple, plain. He is not wearing finery. He is not wearing any jewels. But his beauty is inner beauty that shines through his face. Forgive me, young ascetic, said the woman. Graciously come to my home. 
The dusty earth is not a fit bed for you. So here the lady, she first asks the ascetic to forgive her. Ascetic also means one who abstains from material life. One who has chosen the path of a sannyasin, who is a disciple, a monk, who lives in meditation and prayer. So she then tells this young sannyasi to come to her home. She says, do not lie down on this dust. It is not a fit bed for somebody like you. The young ascetic answered, Woman, go on your way. When the time is ripe, I will come to you. So the young ascetic then told the woman to leave. He says, no, it is not time for me to come to your home. You may proceed. I will come to you when the time is ripe. If you take this poem, the Abhisara, about Vasavadatta, this is a very versatile poem which has been made into various forms in many languages all over India. It has been played in the form of drama as a dance form, also as a play, a movie, a poem. So it is there in every form. In Malayalam, we have uh, the poem Karuna written by Kumar Nash. Malayala Kavidiyude Kalpaniga Vasandathine Thudakkam Kuruchcha Kaviyaan Kumar Nasham. Ashande Valare Prasiddhamaya Uri Kavidiyaan Karuna. Adil Vasavadathiyye uh, Ashan Visheshi Pikkinadu Kanjabanan Thande Pattam Kettiya Jachni Poloru Manjulangi Irikkyunnu Madhi Mohini Ennu Varanyaan. Kanjabanan Adava Kama Devande Rakni Avan Matram, Soundhari Mullaval, Manjulangi, Manoheri, Valari Agarshani Ayaval, Enan Ashan Vasavadati Visheshi Pikunada, Arim Kandal Mohichapogunaval, Madi Mohini Anaval, Aval Ubaguptani Ubaguptani Stapadigim, Tori Mariach, Windum Windum, Avaludi Adate Ubaguptane, Shenichavundi Kuno. Pakshe Samea Maila in the Marodi and Ubagup then Windu Windu, Avalkan Algunadu Samea Maila Polum, Samea Maila Polum, Shema Yende Hrdeetil, Orinu Tori, in the Alpum Sangada Thodium, the Isha Thodium, Vasavata Parino. If it is Samea Valaria Dikam Pradanya Mundu. Here also in this poem, Abhisara, we see that this line that is mentioning time. When the time is ripe, I will come to you. So why is this time so important? Let us see. Suddenly the black night showed its teeth in a flash of lightning. The storm growled from the corner of the sky and the woman trembled in fear. Now suddenly we see that. Again we see visual imagery. And the storm is coming up. The Black night showed its teeth. The lightning is compared or described as the night showing its teeth. Here the night is personified. So one of the devices used is personification. And the woman trembled in fear. All of a sudden the woman is trembling in fear. A year had not passed. It was an evening of a day in April in the spring. So now we know that from August we have come to April of the next year. So an entire year has not passed. It is only this many months. The branches of the wayside trees are so beautiful. They are full of blossoms. Gay notes of a flute came floating in the warm spring from afar. The citizens had gone to the woods to the festival of flowers. From the mid sky gazed the full moon on the shadows of the silent town. The young ascetic was walking in the lonely street. So suddenly we see that this young ascetic, he is walking through the streets. The mid sky gazed, the full moon is there and it is shining above the silent town. It is a beautiful landscape. The gay notes from a flute are floating towards this young ascetic was walking and all the citizens had gone to the festival of flowers. 
So they had gone to the woods, the land, the roads seemed to be deserted. Again, the words festival of flowers brings in alliteration. While overhead, the lovesy curls uttered from the mango branches, their sleepless pliant. So the lovesy curls are the birds. They are plaintively crying. That is, there is a sleepless crying or sounds of the bird can be heard. So now we come into auditory imagery. We have to imagine the sounds made by the birds. Upagupta passed through the city gates and stood at the base of the rampart. Rampart is a border or a fortification near the gates. So Upagupta is standing at the base of this rampart. What woman lay at his feet in the shadow of the mango grove? Suddenly he sees a woman lying there in the shadow of the mango grove. Struck with a black pestilence, her body was spotted with sores of smallpox. She had been hurriedly driven away from the town to avoid her poisonous contagion. So there is a woman whose body is covered with the marks of smallpox. We know that it is a deadly disease of the period. She is covered with the smallpox marks and it is a black pestilence, deadly she had been hurriedly driven away. The townspeople shunned her. They have told her not to come back into town because it is contagious. And they are, they are afraid that it will spread to the people of the town. In those times, whether it was a plague, a smallpox, any deadly disease, malaria, people used to be shunned from the city so that the other people would not be contaminated or such a contagion would not spread. The ascetic sat by her side, gently took her head on his knees and moistened his lips with water and smeared her body with balm. Who are you, merciful one? asked the woman. The time at last has arrived for me to visit you and I am here, Vasavadatta replied the young ascetic. So here we see that when this woman lies without any help, she has no one, there are no admirers around her. She has lost her beauty, she has lost her good health. She lies nearing death and that is when the young ascetic reaches her and he comforts her, he places her head on his knees, he places balm on her face, on her, he treats her with love and compassion. He moistens her lips with water and he takes care of her. So this is how the poem ends. This is a very symbolic poem. Rabindranath Tagore and, uh, could be, is one of the most influential poets of the early 20th century the late 19th century. In fact, if India could have two iconic people, the most iconic people of India in the late 19th century and the early 20th century, it would definitely be Mahatma Gandhi, the great statesman, social reformer, politician, as well as Rabindranath Tagore, for he was the one who united the Western and uh, Indian literature the first non-European to get the Nobel Prize. His Gitanjali has won fame all over India. So Gurudev, as he was lovingly still is referred to, has written this poem in order to show the importance of the Buddhist culture. Here the poem is very symbolic because it shows the binary opposite of materialism as well as the temporary nature of materialism on one side and on the other side we see spirituality, the permanence of spirituality. Now another very interesting fact is that initially when we see the woman as beautiful, she had been described as drunk with the wine of youth. At that period we see that both of them are young and beautiful 
and healthy but look at the imagery around it it is a dark murky august the city gates are shut the very fact that the doors are shut is also symbolic of the doors being shut to spirituality doors being shut to something that is higher superior the doors are closed and this lady though her exterior is beautiful we see that her mind is not yet ready to accept the more beautiful path of life which is moksha or nirvana so the atmosphere around is ugly or murky while she herself is beautiful her exterior is beautiful at the end of the poem we see that she is pestilence ridden she is lying there in a mango grove she is going to die but there we see that the atmosphere has suddenly turned very beautiful here tagore wants to tell us that this is inner beauty and now she is approaching a state where her mind is going to be free of materialism she is going to embrace the doctrine of buddhism she is listening to those comforting words about buddhism that upagupta is telling her his compassion is flowing into her and that forgiveness is taking her in her last moments to a blissful end and that is why we see that the towards the end the imagery becomes the branches on the wayside trees were filled with blossoms the festival of flowers and even the city gates have opened the city gates have opened to upagupta spirituality and another thing that we need to see is that as vasavadatta changes from one who is in the temporal world totally materialistic she changes in the end towards one who realizes that the ultimate and permanent solution or permanent way of life is moksha we see that the ascetic upagupta does not change throughout the story because that stoicism is what makes his spirituality beautiful he does not need to change he has already reached that path of uh, light or enlightenment another very important line is woman go on your way the young ascetic answered woman go on your way when the time is ripe i will come to you so these words go on your way has two meanings one is proceed on your way i cannot accompany you and another is go on your way in your life my path is chosen upagupta knows that his path is the path of buddhism and that is already chosen so he asks her go your way whatever is the way that is destined for you what it is that you wish continue on that path malayalathilum kumarnashan idu pole thanne avasanam vasavadathiye thala madil vachukonde avare saandunipikkuna upaguptanodu dukkathode vasavadatha chodikkunnundu angu varan വളരെ വൈകിപ്പോയല്ലോ എന്ന് പറയുന്നുണ്ട് അവിടെ ഇല്ല ഞാൻ താമസിച്ചു പോയില്ലടോ സരളശീലെ അല്ലൽ നീ ഇന്ന് എന്നെ ചൊല്ലി ആർന്നിതായികേടോ ശോഭന കാലങ്ങളിൽ നീ ഗമ്യയായില്ല എനിക്ക് നിൻ സൗഭകത്തിൽ മോഹമാർന്ന സുഹൃത്തല്ല ഞാൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് ഉപഗുപ്തൻ അവരെ സമാധാനിപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് ഉപഗുപ്തൻ ഒരിക്കലും അവരുടെ സൗന്ദര്യത്തിലോ ആകർഷണീയതയിലോ ഒട്ടും തന്നെ താല്പര്യം കാണിച്ചില്ല ഹിയർ വി സി ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ദ എൻഡ് ഓഫ് ദ പോം വാസവദത്ത എറ്റെയിൻസ് ദാറ്റ് മോക്ഷ ഓർ ദാറ്റ് സ്പിരിച്വൽ ഹാപ്പിനെസ് ആൻഡ് ഈവൻ ദോ ഹെർ ബോഡി ഇസ് ഇൻ പെയിൻ ഹെർ സോൾ ഇസ് അറ്റ് റെസ്റ്റ് ദ ടേം അഭിസാര വിച്ച് ടഗോർ ഹസ് ഗിവൻ ദ ട്രിസ്റ്റ് വിച്ച് മീൻസ് മീറ്റിംഗ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ആശാൻസ് karuna which means compassion both are very apt for this poem this poem is not only about upagupta and vasavadatta they are merely two characters but the poem is about a meeting with compassion
compassion i would say is the main character of this poem thank you